Hey, Betty, your seat's over here, Betty. <laughs> us through various online methods. <clears throat> Our call to worship this morning will be from Psalms 105 verses 1 through 4, and the first song will be When We All Get to Heaven. If you do it, please stand and repeat after me. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Amen. 
the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus will sing and shout the victory amen and good morning church good morning, good morning. how are we feeling this morning amen amen our next selection will be song number 158 the sweetest name of all after which we'll have scripture reading and prayer and we'll sing all three verses let us all together sing. Jesus, you're the sweetest name of all. Jesus, you always hear me when I call. Oh, Jesus, you pick me up each time I fall. You're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all. Jesus, how I love to praise your name. Jesus, you're still the first, the last, the same. Oh, Jesus, you died and took away my shame. You're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all. Jesus, you're the soon and coming king jesus we need the love that you can bring oh jesus we lift our voices up and sing because you're the sweetest the sweetest name of all yes you're the sweetest the sweetest name of all and you're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to read. Scripture reading this morning will be coming from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 30. That's Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 30. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible reads, And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep at night, and rise by day, and the seed shall sprout and grow. He himself it does not know how, for the earth yields crops for itself. First the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. I've read for you Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 30. Let us now be led in prayer. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let us rejoice today, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let's go to heaven, Father, to prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace this morning, Father. We approach you, Father, with thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for this day. And not only this day, a new day, 
in a new day, Father, that you allowed us to ride this morning at the sea, Father. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. And, Father, we just want to say thank you so much for your dog and son, Father. The one, Father, who made it possible, Father. The one that, Father, we are, Father, praying for, Father. Praying that one day, Father, that we may see your face in peace. And, Father, we just want to thank you so much, Father, for the leadership that's here at this congregation, Father. For the things they are trying to put in our Father. And Father, I pray and hope, Father, that you will guide them, Lord, yes. and have them do that what is right. And Father, we come to you, Father. Just want to say, Father, thank you for the ones that are here, the one that's online, Father, the one that are on their way, Father. Let them make it feel safe and sound. And Father, for those that desired that, that didn't want to serve this morning, Father, be with them also, Father. So Father, we know that you are a given God. And Father, we just want to say thank you, Father. We thank you for the life that you have given us, Father. We just thank you. And Father, we have come to you, Father, this morning. Asking, Father, that you look down on each individual this morning, Father, elected or in hope. And Father, I ask that you look on the congregation, Father, that it may strive to do those things, Father, that we may grow in spirit to grow, Father. And Father, and just be with us. And oh, Heavenly Father, let us not forget, Father, the ones that have went on before us, Father. And that one day, Father, we may see them, Father. And Father, just be with us, Father. Bless us and God. For this is our prayer in your holy and beloved Son's name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our next song is entitled, Heaven is in My Heart. And we'll sing both verses. Let us all together sing. Oh, 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 oh heaven is in my heart. Singing, oh. singing oh heaven is in my heart we're singing oh heaven is in my heart the kingdom of our god is here heaven is in my heart the presence of his majesty, heaven is in my heart, and in his presence joy abounds, heaven is in my heart, the light of holiness surround, heaven is in my well let me hear you singing, oh singing oh, 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 oh heaven is in my heart we are a temple for his throne heaven is in my heart and Christ is the foundation stone heaven is in my heart he will return to take us home heaven is in my heart the spirit and the bride say come heaven is in my heart well let me hear you singing oh, 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 oh. heaven is in my heart we're singing oh Everybody singing, oh, 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 heaven is in my heart. Singing, oh, 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 heaven is in my heart. Amen, church. 
song of invitation this morning is going to be I Am Resolved, number 948. I Am Resolved will be the song of invitation. And the song before the message will be number 181. Bless the name of Jesus. We have it, let us all together sing. Bless the name of Jesus, raise the name of Jesus, sing unto the King of Israel. Bless the name of Jesus, let's praise the name of Jesus, sing unto the King of Israel, and I sing glory, sing glory, glory to his name forever, glory, sing the name of Jesus. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Bless the name of Jesus. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. sing glory, sing glory, glory to his name forever, glory, sing glory, glory. church say amen. Uh, once again, we are thankful to God Almighty for giving us yet another opportunity to come and to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we are very much so appreciative for all of those who have taken part in our devotion uh, this morning. Uh, we appreciate Brother C.C. for how he led us in those songs today. Uh, and he seemed to be in a glorious mood. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that we ought to give glory to God, uh, not just in our singing, but in all of our worship. Uh, there ought to be some glory in the worship that we offer to the Lord. Uh, we also want to thank Brother Green for the uh, outstanding job that he uh, did give, leading us in a word of prayer, taking us to the throne of grace. And wasn't it good to see Ben back up here uh, reading the scripture? Uh, we know and we're thankful that uh, he uh, replaced his lot uh, here with Wheelis some weeks ago. Uh, you know, some sometimes, yeah, you can applaud. Uh, it's good for, you know, that, that says something when you leave and you come back to the place that you left. Uh, you know, sometimes people leave and they never come back. Uh, but when you leave and you come back, 
to the same place, uh, then it shows that there is a connection there that uh, was meaningful. I don't know if Brother Callaway had anything to do with that, uh, but uh, he said no, so that's, that's even better. That means daddy didn't twist his own. So uh, he came back on his own, and that's good to see him and his family uh, back here with us uh, at the Wheelers congregation. Uh, at this time, we want to prepare our hearts for uh, the message today. Uh, we're going to ask that you stand for the reading of the text. And the text is coming from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 4. Uh, we want to keep in mind as we uh, look at Mark, chapter 4, our theme for this year, uh, as we are looking uh, at the harvest and having a heart for the harvest, Matthew, chapter uh, 9, uh, verses uh, 37 and 38, uh, primarily, uh, where the Bible says, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Uh, pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Uh, you have your Bibles. I'm going to ask you to hold them up. And please repeat after me. This book, this book is the source of my salvation. Is the of my salvation. This, book this book is the key to my freedom. Is the key to my freedom. This, book this book will reveal to me, reveal to me who, I am who I am and who I shall become. The reading of the text comes from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. If you're there or if you're able to see it, please say amen. amen. The Bible says, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain uh, in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because harvest has come. You may be seated. For our consideration this morning, we want to use as a subject, understanding the harvest. Understanding the harvest. Now, before we can really understand the harvest, we must be able to understand that uh, there is a person that is appointed as a sower. And all of those who are Christians are sowers. And what we are to sow is simply the seed. The Bible in the text once again says that he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. The kingdom of God is in reference to the church because the church is the kingdom. Jesus is the king and the bible tells us that the king sits upon the throne so when he makes this analogy he's saying uh the kingdom of god or the church in which god established can be compared to as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and then the man notice in verse 27 should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow he himself does not know how the man plants the seed casts the seed th throws out the seed and then when he throws out the seed he goes on his own way ah, he goes to sleep at night he wakes up in the morning and does this for a period of time and then the next thing you know, the seed has sprouted. He doesn't know how it sprouted. But if I may, uh, may add a little something, we know how it sprouted. 
Because we know that it was God that took that seed and caused that seed to grow. The Bible says in verse 28, for the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, uh, the full grain in the head. Uh, he's telling us that growth is a process. Uh, you don't just uh, wake up and put an apple seed in the ground and the next day you go out and pick your apple. Uh, there is a growth process that takes place uh, uh, when it comes to growing crops. And even with the church, the comparison is being made. There is a growth process. The church should never stay in the same place that it has always been throughout eternity. The church should always be in a state of a mindset that we need to continue to grow. Then as the growth happens, uh, then there should be a time uh, that we should harvest, take in from what we what the Lord has blessed to grow. Verse 29, the Bible says, and when the grain ripens, now the grain has reached a point where it's good for something. It, 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 it's meaningful where it can help somebody else. Uh, it has grown to a state of maturity where it can be useful in helping some other grains be planted. He says when it gets to that point, immediately he puts down the sickle because the harvest is come. So as we look at this lesson, uh, before we can uh, be the harvest, we must recognize the sower and the seed. Now, when we talk about uh, the sower, keep in mind that all of those who have obeyed God, when I say they have obeyed God, I mean that they have heard his truth, they have believed his truth, they have made repentance and a commitment to God through repentance and confession, and they have been baptized into the body of Christ. As they have been baptized into Christ, they continue to learn and to grow. These individuals are the souls. Now, we want to make sure that we are responsible as souls. Hello, sir. We have a responsibility as souls to make sure that the seed is planted in fertile ground. In Matthew, the 13th chapter, the Bible tells us a story about the sower and the seeds. And the Bible says that a man has taken some seeds and he has cast them out. Now, as he cast them out, and, and we use this uh, particular parable of Jesus for many, many reasons, but I want you to focus in on this. As he cast out the seed, he is not really, uh, not really cognitive of where he's casting the seed. Because the Bible says that some of the seed fell by the wayside and some of the seeds fell on stony ground and some of the seeds fell among the thorns and then there were some other seeds that fell among good ground. Now, if we understand the parable, we ought to understand we need to be cognitive, we need to be aware of where we're casting the seed. Because if you cast the seed in some unfertile ground, then you're risking that, that the seed will not be as successful as it ought to be. Now, those seeds that were cast by the wayside, according to that parable, the birds came and ate it up. Stony ground, uh, uh, they, they tried to rise, but they weren't able to get to full growth. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the part, of, in the reference of the thorny ground, the world, the cares of the world drowned out the growth that was coming in, and they were unable to be successful, but there were some that made it into some good ground. The church, we need to realize that, that the church that we are in, the congregation, 
that we are in needs to always make sure that our ground is good ground. We don't want the ground to be so that when someone receives uh, the seed, uh, that, the, that they're choked out because there's more enticing things in the world than there are in the church. Yeah. We don't want the seed to be, uh, to be unable to grow because it is so difficult. The ground is so hard. See, sometimes folk can be so unfriendly that somebody can come into the church and they'll leave the church because of the folk that are already in the church. Hello. And then you have folk that, uh, that they hear the word, but the word really did not take effect. Uh, and, and the birds soon come and they take take it away from them. We see this in that particular parable that Jesus uh, presents to us. But we have to understand that we have a responsibility to make sure that the ground is right for a harvest to come in the future. Now as we look at this, we also can identify, uh, we can identify that uh, planting the seed, casting the seed is not all that we have to do. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and the verse is 6. Uh, we see an illustration there given by Paul. Paul says, I planted. In other words, I took the seed and made sure the seed was in some good ground. And then he said, well, I didn't do it all by myself because Apollos was with me. Now, Apollos wasn't a perfect man because we know that Apollos had to go back and be retaught some things. So Apollos was still there with Paul, and Apollos, he watered what I had planted. Uh, but then he gives all of the credit to God because even though I planted the seed, and Apollos watered the seed. He said, God gave the increase. God is the one that caused it to truly grow. We have a part to do, but don't, don't think that your little part outweighs God's big part. See, sometimes when people start growing in the church, some people look in amazement because we look at who the person was before they came to the Lord, and we can't imagine what they're able to do now. Well, you don't realize what God was able to do with that person's life. God is the one that gives the increase. He is the one that takes us from one state of life and places us into another state in life. So we can see that Apollos, uh, uh, that Paul planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. In Luke chapter 16, and the verse is 10, uh, the Bible lets us know there that if we're going to be planters, if we're going to be righteous servants, uh, that we have to be dependable. Hello. Uh, you know, the Lord is looking for somebody that he can count on. Now, if we put it in, if we put the shoe on the other foot, uh, we want to be able to depend on the Lord. You know, we, we don't want to, to pray to the Lord and the Lord take the day off and not answer our prayer. Uh, we don't want the Lord to take the day off and, and miss waking us up in the morning. We don't want the Lord to take the day off and not give us the air that we need to breathe, uh, the, 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 the strength in our bodies that we need to walk or to move about, or uh, the, the conception of our mind so that we can, we don't want God taking the day off. And God doesn't want us taking the day off either. The Bible says he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. What are you saying, Luke? Uh, uh, Luke is simply saying this. Uh, I'm giving you a little bit of something to do. And show me that you can do a little something. And if you can show me that you can do a little something, I'll give you a little bit more that you can handle. But see, some of us are not able to do any more than what we've already done because we haven't shown that God shown to the Lord that we can be faithful in what He's already given us. I'm not advocating playing the lottery. I'm gonna say that right now. I'm not advocating that. 
But I, I've heard folks say that if I win, now, didn't I see on the news that they say that one of them lotteries over a billion dollars or something like that? Some of y'all shaking y'all, y'all watching that pretty close, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I think I saw somewhere that it said it's over a billion dollars. And people will say, well, if I just hit, I'm going to take care of the church. Yeah, I'm going to do right by the Lord. Well, my question is, why ain't you doing right by the Lord now? <laughs> God done bless you with a little, and you're not even taking your little to do right by the Lord. If you can't do right by the Lord with a little, what makes you think you're going to do right by the Lord with a lot? I think I made my point there. Uh, the, the sower is the one that God can depend on to plant and to water the seed. Well, when we talk about all of these things that the sower is supposed to do, we have to remember that the sower also has a way that he should go about doing it. There is a certain conduct that he must possess. Uh, the Bible says in uh, first uh, in Philippians, rather chapter one, and the verse is twenty-seven. The Bible says, "Let uh, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ." Uh, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, uh, that you stand fast uh, in one spirit, uh, with one mind, striving together in the faith of the gospel. What he is simply saying is in our conduct, we don't need to be lone rangers. We need to work together. And in our working together, uh, we have to make sure that our working together is worthy of the gospel of Christ. Uh, that our work is not self-centered or self-focused, but that our work is focused on the one who sent us into the fields to work in the first place. And Paul says, I need to know, I need to have confidence that you're going to work the same whether I'm present or whether I'm gone. Some folk, <clears throat> now I, I pray nobody in here, some folk work differently when the boss is around than when the boss is gone. Yes, when the boss leaves, some, some folks say, whoo, he gone, I can put my feet up for a little hour, for an hour or two. Uh, and then when he come back, we here we go, trying to work hard and fast again. Paul says, I don't want y'all to be like that. A good person, a good servant will work consistently whether he is being watched or not. Now, here's the kicker. Paul was saying whether I'm present or not. But my Bible tells me about an all-seeing eye that's always watching us. And while he watches us, whether we're doing right, whether we're doing wrong, or whether we're not doing anything at all, the Lord's eye is constantly on us. So as a sower, as a producer in God's kingdom, we must realize that there is a responsibility that is placed upon us. Now, keep in mind also that we're not just talking about the sower, but we also need to talk about the seed. You know, what is this seed that we need to be sowing? Uh, now, one thing that you need to understand about the seed is that all of the power is placed in the seed. Uh, God has let it be known that uh, as we talk about him giving the increase, now I'm going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verses 6 and 7 this time. We see there that Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. He says, so then neither uh, he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So he says, basically, don't put too much emphasis on yourself. Why? Because I have placed the power within the seed. Now, as we notice a few other passages, uh, just to clarify that, uh, in Luke chapter 8, and the verse is 11, we see a similar parable being mentioned. And the Bible says, now the parable is this. 
The seed is the word of God. So when we talk about what we are casting, we're casting out the word of God. Now some will cast it and others will reject it when it is casted, but if we are casting it in fertile ground, we will find that the Lord will bless that ground to be able to grow. So as we talk about this seed, and we acknowledge what Luke says in Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, we can see the power that is existing in the word or in the seed. Hebrews chapter 4, and the verse is 12. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and powerful. Uh, now, when we talk about the word being living, what we are simply saying is that it is active. It is moving. The word of God, as we go through the word of God, there's a reason why we say the word ought to be the source of our salvation. Because the word ought to be moving within you. The more you read the word, the more the word ought to galvanate in your heart to cause you to do some things that you may not be doing as the, God, as the Lord has commanded. It ought to cause changes in your life. It ought to cause you to examine yourself. All of these things we can see. Now the Bible says that the word of God is living and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The, the word of God can really determine whether or not you really want to be a Christian or not. Now you see why we say that it reveals to you who you are and who you are to become. Because as the word is presented to you, you, are, you, you will know whether or not you truly want to be a child of God. Because either you're going to obey it, accept it and obey it, or you will reject it and denounce it. So as we note this, the word of God is where the strength lies and God has placed the strength or the power in the seed. So as we look at the text and we understand that the seed is scattered on the ground and once the seed has been scattered on the ground, God goes to work and causes the seed to sprout up. What is the seed? The seed, once again, is the word of God. Once the word starts to sprout uh, in a person, then they start to develop into the person that God would have them to be. So understanding that the power is in the seed. We also have to understand there is a necessity for spiritual growth. God does not want his church, his members, to be stagnant. He wants them to grow. And in order to grow, one, you got to have somebody doing some planting, some watering, or caring for, and you have to let God do his part. But understanding that spiritual growth is a necessity, we have to be willing to accept and make changes within ourselves as new plants are growing up. The Bible tells me in James chapter 5, beginning at verse number 7, the Bible says, therefore be patient. Be patient. Uh, uh, he says, be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. In other words, uh, you know, let God do his work. The man, when he went to sleep one night, he got up the next morning, if he went back to the field, all he saw was the ground that he planted the seed in. Uh, he didn't see a tree. We got to learn to be patient. And we got to learn to be patient with one another. Because all Christians are not at the same place at the same time. There are some who are mature in the gospel. There are some who are uh, novice in the gospel. There are some 
who have forgotten the gospel. There are some who detect, who detect the gospel. There are some who are striving to get better in the gospel. And we all are made up into this one kingdom that God has placed in uh, place for mankind for our salvation, but we're at different places. And if we're in one place, we can't, we can't look down on somebody else who's in another place. Some folk who are not as knowledgeable and have not studied as much as others, no need of you looking at the person who's done the study and being jealous or envious of them. No need for the person who has done the study and who seems to be living according to uh, the, the way of the Lord to look down on somebody who hasn't reached where they are. You know, sometimes we forget that the Bible does say, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We look at folk at the state that they're in, and we want to push them down further than what God has intended them to be pushed. That's why I'm thankful that God has the power and put the power in the seed and did not put the power in the sower. Because if he'd have put the power in the sower, there would have been some seeds that would have never gotten planted. Understand that there is a necessity for spiritual growth. Uh, the Bible says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it, is, for, uh, for it until it receives uh, the earlier and the latter rain. Uh, you also be patient. He says, establish your heart. In other words, not only be patient, but be uh, confident and relaxed in your mind uh, that God is going to cause the seed to come up. Some folk, we, we give up on folk. Hello. Well, I, I know I share with them the truth. And uh, they just won't obey. Well, you don't know what time frame they may be on. God knows the time frame. Now, it's true that there are some who will just reject the word of God, and there's nothing that you can do but pray for those who reject God's word. Uh, but don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. Keep giving opportunity to share with them God's word. Now, if they reject it, as the, as the New Testament tells us, God, Jesus told the apostles, if they reject me, to and move on. Now you can, you know what? I can pray for somebody after I done left their house. I can pray for somebody after they have told me they don't want to hear it no more. I can still pray for them even if I'm not in the same room with them. Dust it off your feet and keep moving, but keep praying for them. Because the Bible still tells me that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So don't give up on somebody. Uh, the Bible says, be patient, establish your heart, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. God is coming back. And the last thing that you want to be is missing in action when the Lord comes back. You know, I, I now this is me. Uh, can I say? Can I say this is me, y'all? Uh, now the Bible tells us plainly and simply that uh, no man knoweth the day or nor the hour uh, that the Lord cometh. It also tells us that even Christ Himself doesn't know when the Lord is going to send Him back. Uh, for, uh, and cause the thing that we call time to cease to exist. But we know that it's going to happen. But I have formulated in my mind, this is false, that this is not Bible, I have formulated in my mind that Jesus is not coming back on a Sunday. I said, that's false, that's not, that's not Jesus. Now, I believe that the Lord probably won't come back on a Sunday because that's when folk put on their best. That's when most folk want to be as righteous as they possibly can be. Now, he might come on a Saturday night. He might come on Friday night. I don't know when he's coming, 
But I believe that we ought to always be prepared, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or even if he does come on a Sunday. God bless us if he comes on a Sunday. Some folk who might have been might have been on the on the verge of losing their soul, they might just slip on in there. The Bible says that the righteous scarcely be saved. That means some people are gonna be just barely making it in. And that's the righteous folk. You know, where shall the ungodly and the unjust appear? So we can see that there is a necessity for spiritual growth, and we have to be patient. We have to be trustworthy that God will allow what has been planted to grow. So, this leads us to the question, how should you, or what should you do, what should you do with the harvest? You planted the seed. You see that God has blessed the seed. The seed has now grown. What should we do with the harvest? Well, what should be done with the harvest? is that we should increase the harvest. We continue to grow the harvest. Uh, they tell me that uh, wheat can be taken, made into something called bread. You take the harvest, you utilize the harvest to make it more impactful and meaningful for the whole. As people come into the church, and, and God has been good to us, Weavers. God has been good to us. We, we've had people that have come back to this congregation, people who have come to this congregation for the first time. We've had individuals who have obeyed the gospel, put him on in baptism. God has been good to us. But as he is being good to us, and as these individuals start to grow, we need to make sure that we have purpose for them to continue their growth. We have to remove some glass ceilings and allow people to continue to do what God has given them the ability to do. Which means that some of us who have been doing some things for some years may have to step aside and say, uh, and stop acting like you own what you do. Well, this is my area. I don't need anybody else over here. Well, when you have that type of spirit, you might be stunting somebody else's continual growth in the Lord. You can never have too much of something good from God. Amen. Hello? When God blesses you to have something, he's blessing you with it for a reason. Amen. And the reason is so that you can take what he has given you and cause it to grow even more so. John, the 15th chapter, is evidence of this as we look at verses 1 through 8. The Bible says there, I am the true vine. Keep that in mind. Jesus says, I'm the vine. You're not the vine. I'm the vine. Amen. And you're not even the carer of the vine because the Bible says, and my father is the vine dresser. The King James Version uses the word husbandman. He is the one that takes care of the vine. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he proves that it may bear what? Now, if you're doing some good, God will start to prune you. Have y'all ever seen a tree being pruned or a limb being pruned? To prune it, you got to do some cut. So the limb is being cut some. And as the limb is being cut some, it's being cut and shaped and molded in a way that it can produce more than what it is already producing. Some folk in the church get to a point where they're content producing what they're producing. And that's what causes stagnation in the church. Some people say, well, I just like the church just the way it is. Well, that's okay for you to like, for, uh, 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 and that's okay for you to say that's what you like. But we're not here for what we like. We're here for what God likes. And God doesn't like anything that's not moving in a positive way, in a positive momentum. God wants to see everything growing. And it doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. You can always grow. 
You can always learn. The Bible says that he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. He says, you are already clean uh, because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Now, I believe there's some significance there in verse 4. Because he says, you're already doing all right. You already understand the word. You're already about, but he says, now, now that you're doing what you need to do, stay with me. Abide with me. Stay in me. As you stay in me, I will stay in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So don't get to the point where you start to think that this is me and this is what I do. And, um, and, and don't feel like some, you step, somebody is stepping on your toes when they have the same skill set or if they have more skill set in a particular area than you. I once heard Steve Harvey uh, talk about uh, being a comedian. And he related that to uh, his faith in God. And what he said, what the question was that was asked to him was, uh, you know, do you feel intimidated when another comedian comes along and maybe they get a bigger venue, they make a little bit more money, uh, they seem to be funnier than you? And he said in his response, he said, what God has given to me, he gave to me. I don't, have, I don't need to worry about what God allows for somebody else. Now, if he allows somebody else to do more or do greater things, that's what he allowed for them to do. Uh, now, I believe that same principle ought to be accepted by those of us in the church. Don't worry about what God let somebody else to do. Be thankful for what he blessed you to do. And just use what he gave you to the best of your ability and strive to work together with all people and, that are in the church and not separate yourself uh, because of what you may have a preference for. The Bible goes on to say, verse number six, if anyone does not abide in me, he has what? Cast out as what? In other words, he, 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 he separates you and doesn't even acknowledge that you are part of the vine. He casts you out as a branch. And then if you're, when you're being cast out, the Bible says that it's withered. And they, gave, and they gathered them and threw them into the fire and they were burned. When you start to think that it's yours and it's not God, the Lord has a way of cutting you off. And when you've been cut off, you're not receiving the nutrients that God has given us. Eventually, you will with them. I once heard somebody say, well, this won't happen while I'm here. Uh, over my dead body. You better be careful saying stuff like that. Because see, God controls life and death. And if he wants something to take place on the move, it can move with you. Oh, y'all got it. <laughs> we have to remember that the harvest is supposed to grow. Verse number seven, the Bible says, I'll go ahead and get verse seven and eight out of the way. Verse number seven, if you abide in me and in my word and my words abide in you, you will ask uh, what you desire and it shall be done for you. He says, for uh, this is, uh, for uh, by this my Father is glorified uh, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If you want to be acknowledged as a disciple of God, you got to do what God wants you to do. Now, in that, we also have to know that our life is to be a sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. As Sores, we must remember that we are to sacrifice ourselves. 
It is we sacrifice ourselves for the well-being of God's will. If we sacrifice ourselves for God's will, then we know that God will bless us in the end. And all of us are seeking the reward in the end. And so in order to receive that reward, we must understand that we have to go through a growth process, growth process. What should we do? What should we do with the harvest? Seeds have come up. Not only should we continue to grow the seeds that are growing, but we also need to strengthen them. You know, a person who's been in the church three to five years ought not to be in the same predicament that they were in once they first obeyed the gospel in the first year or two of their Christian walk. There ought to be some strengthening where uh, a person is not so quick to give up on the Lord or give up on the work that God has given us to do. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 specifically, and we're going to look at 24 and 25, the Bible says, let us consider who? One another. We got to consider one another. Uh, now, what are we considering one another for? The Bible says, in order to stir up love and good works. We ought to see, can, what can we do to facilitate or to grow the love that we ought to have for one another? I'm not saying the love is already there. What can we do to grow the love? Love ought to be a, continual, a continuous growth process for every member of the church. We ought to start growing more in love with one another instead of falling out of love with one another. And then he goes on to say, not only should we be stirring up love, but we also should be stirring up good works. There is something in the church for everybody to do. Sometimes people just need just a little bit of encouragement to go on to the next level of their Christian walk. And we see that he tells us to do this. Verse 25, he tells us not to forsaking, uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some, uh, but exhorting one another uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching. So he's telling us here that we ought to always be willing to come together. Uh, now, I understand the times that we are in that there are some who are unable to physically come to service. And they may be using uh, one of our electronic formats in order to participate in worship. Now, I say that participate in worship and not watch worship. There is a difference between somebody who is worshiping God, even if you are miles and miles away, or even if you are in a position where you cannot physically transport yourself to the facility where the service, there is a difference between worshiping God and watching worship take place. If you are watching worship take place in lieu of worshiping God, you are forsaking the assembly. Hello. You're not including yourself in the assembly. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy seeing, we, we do it on Wednesday. I, we haven't done it on, uh, on Sunday. I, I like to see when somebody who is online, who is unable to physically come into the facility, I love to see it when they are able to pray or able to sing or able to participate in some way shape or form, answering a question in Bible class, making a statement. I love to see that because guess what they are doing is they are actively engaging themselves in the activity that is being presented. You know, God gave us these innovations for a reason. We use them for all other kind of stuff. To see all other kind of stuff, we ought to be using it to share God's message, to share love with one another, and to bring us all closer together. When we notice this, he says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together at the matter of some, but exhorting one another, lifting up one another in a way where we acknowledge what is missing. Don't get mad when somebody say, brother, I missed you last week. Well, why are you all in my business? I'm trying to encourage you to be in service this coming week. 
I'm trying to encourage you to be actively involved in the work that we have going on, trying to strengthen one another, trying to encourage people who are not Christians to be, I'm trying to help you. And sometimes in order to help someone, you have to point out their shortcomings. You have to point out where they need to be exhorted. And so we see, he says that we ought to exhort one another. Because if you notice the word day is capitalized, he's not talking about Sunday worship. He's talking about the day that the Lord is coming. There's coming a time that God is going to come back. And when he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, I don't want him just to say it to me, but I want him to say it to you too. Because if I can be with you down here, I want to be able to be with you up. Oh, y'all are with me today. Yeah. So we have to be able to strengthen one another. And then you also have to feed yourself. You know, what kind of farmer plants a crop and doesn't eat from the fruit that God blesses him to bear? You know, you ought to be able to eat something off of what you have been able to, to prosper. You know, I'm thankful for those who uh, are wanting to step up in other roles and positions in the church. I'm thankful to see that. Because one day, I'm not going to be able to preach. Hello. I ain't trying to scare y'all. <laughs> but, but whoever's in the pulpit, I want them to be able to bless my soul, whether I'm in the pulpit or whether I'm sitting on the pew. I want them to grow to the point where they can say something that is impactful from the word of God that it will encourage other souls to do the work of the Lord. Amen. You ought to want to eat from your harvest. You ought to want to, you ought to, want to see somebody that you have, had, have poured something into be able to do something that will bless you later. Well, what is it that we need to feed on? We need to feed on the fruit of the spirit. Feed on some love. Feed on some joy. Feed on some peace. Feed on some long suffering and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Bible says against such there is no law. When we add these things to our character and we're able to experience these things by being with each other and uh, sharing with each other, we will cause ourselves to be spiritually full. And there's no better feeling on earth than being full spiritually. But why? Why should we do these things in the harvest? Well, when we talk about the final thing about the harvest, and what should be done, and why it should be done, the Bible lets us know that there is a reward. But the reward comes from your work. So one day you ought to want to prepare for your reward. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and the verses 8, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own work. So if you're working, one day you're going to receive a reward. But you're only going to receive a reward for the work that you did. Not the work. You can't go in on Papa's work. <laughs> you can't go in on Mama's work. You're only going to go in on the work that you have been able to do. So once you do all of these particular things, then you can see that you are a person who truly is ready to have a heart for the harvest because you understand the harvest. If you are here this morning, you're not a child of God, my plea with you is to become a member of the Church of Christ. Well, why do you say the Church of Christ? Because it is the church that we find illustrated in Scripture. Uh, when I say that it's illustrated in Scripture, I'm saying it had to start in the right place. The Bible says that the house of God was going to start in Jerusalem. The heart, it had to start in the right place. It had to start under the right conditions, at the right time under the right circumstances. It was purchased by the right person. The Bible says that Jesus purchased the church with his own blood. You ought to want to be in the church that Jesus 
is associated with. Now, there's a lot of churches, but Jesus is not associated with them because there was only one uh, at the time uh, when Jesus had risen from the grave and had established the church. But we don't see that there were multiple churches having multiple teachings and multiple doctrines. What we see is there was only one church. The Bible says in the, uh, Acts 2.47, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Well, why do we have so many? Well, that's man's doing, and some of it, I believe, is Satan's doing. Because the Bible said, Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's saying that, uh, that even the Hadean world can't stop what I'm building. So if Satan can't stop it, then I need to make it hard to find. Make it a needle in a haystack. And maybe other folk will start Stop searching for it. Stop looking for it. And if they are able to stop looking and searching for it, then maybe they'll just miss it. We've got a lot of people in this world that's missing the church because they have gotten involved in other things that are not spoken of in the Holy Scripture. Well, now you're in a place where we're talking about the Holy Scripture. How do you become a member of it? You have to understand and know and believe that Jesus lived, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You hear this word, do you believe it? Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth and not shall be condemned. You know, if you hear it and you believe it, that's not enough because the Bible says that even the devils believe and tremble. So you got to do more than just hear it and believe it. Bible tells us that we must repent of sin. Luke 13 and 3. I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. When you make a confession, you must a repentance, you must confess that Jesus is the Christ. Matthew 10, 32, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven, and be buried with him in baptism. Acts 2, 38. Peter said unto them, Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If that be your desire, we're going to ask that you come. As we stand and as we sing the Savior's invitation, why don't you come? I am the God no longer to linger, charmed by the world, delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these that learn my side. I'm so glad and free. It's the glad and free Jesus. Jesus, greatest, highest. I will come to thee. I want to thank you for listening so attentively. I pray I said something to challenge your mind, challenge you in your Christian walk. May God bless you. May he keep you. Amen. Uh, before it's this time to um, acknowledge any prayer requests that we have, um, we've got three cards, uh, one from um, Brother Ben Calloway, one from Sister Renee Monier, one from Brother Wes uh, Shaw. And uh, I want to also take the opportunity to see if there are others in the audience that, that maybe didn't get a chance to fill out a card or would like their prayer request. Brother Rob. God is good. It's good to see you over there, sister. Amen. Any other? Any others? Any other prayer questions? I'm missing anyone. Brother Paul.
to them. Amen. 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 Church, let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we're thankful for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the beautiful day that you gave us and you wake, woke us up and allowed us to be able to see it, to participate, to move around. Dear God, we're, we're thankful that you gave us the, the mindset to want to be in your service today, dear Lord. We're thankful that you gave us the ability to do so. And Lord, whether we're, we're here in this building, we're so thankful to be able to be here. Or for those that couldn't be here are able to join us uh, through electronic means, Lord, we're thankful for this service. But we're thankful for the songs and we're thankful for the prayers. We're, we're thankful for the reading of your word. We're thankful, dear God, for the message that we just heard from your word. Dear God, at this time, we also have some very specific requests. Lord, we live in a world where there's so much things, so many things going on. We have to face them on a, day, on a daily basis. But Lord, we know that we have you, the most powerful being in all of the universe that we can bring our cares to and know that we're heard. Dear Lord, we pray a special prayer right now for, on behalf of uh, Brother Ben, whose uh, wife Tila and daughter Aaliyah are home under the weather. Lord, we pray that you bless them to start feeling better, dear God, so they can continue to do the, so that Tila can continue to do the things that she enjoys doing and that, and that the little one can feel better. And, and bless Ben as he tries to be a wonderful husband and father. Lord, we, we pray also for the request of Sister uh, Renee Manya. Uh, Miss Willa May, dear God, is, um, is, is, is uh, doctors are trying to find what's causing the physical condition that she's dealing with. Lord, we pray for those doctors that they're able to figure out what it is. We know, dear God, that uh, the medical advances, the knowledge that mankind has, dear God, we know it came from you. And we, we pray, dear God, that you allow them to use the things that you were given to us to be a benefit uh, to Mrs. Willamette. Really but we prayerful for the request of our brother West, for his children and grandchildren who are on their way traveling back to Dallas today, dear Lord. We're thankful that you blessed them to get here safely. We're thankful, dear God, that you allowed them to spend time with, uh, with West. And Lord, we pray that you, at this point you let them get home safe. But we also pray for our brother Ronnie Green, who's uh, not feeling well this morning. Allergies are getting to him, dear Lord. We pray that, uh, that you bless him, that he starts to feel better. We know, dear God, that Ronnie is a hard-fighting soldier, that he, he tries to share your word with people as uh, any opportunity he has. And we know, dear God, over the years, he's been a consistent fixture here at the, at, in, the, in the worship service. We pray, dear Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that you allow him to start feeling better. Lord, we're so thankful that Sister Queen is sitting in the audience with us right now. Dear God, we, we hear Brother Rod and the explanation of a total vehicle. Dear Lord, but we also, we also see her sitting here. We understand, dear Lord, that there are still some physical residual challenges that are left behind. Dear Lord, we pray that you let her get through those as well. And dear God, we know that, that you take care of your people. And so, so, yeah, there may be some, some financial ramifications associated with it, dear Lord. But, dear God, we pray that you bless them through. Lord, we, we pray for uh, little Carter, the Noel's grandson. Dear Lord, he's been through a lot. He's got some more tests coming up, and we pray for good results from those tests. And as we pray for the little Carter, we also pray for the, for the patriarch of the family, Brother Noel. He's got some tests going on as well. We pray for good results from those tests also. Lord, we, we pray, uh, lastly, dear God, we I pray that you allow uh, Sonia and I to have safe travel to our destination, to enjoy the things that are there, and let us get home safely, dear Lord. We thank you for all of the wonderful things in this life. Lord, we thank you for this sweetest family where we love together and we joy together and we encourage one another, dear Lord. We're thankful for the gift of love that's here at Wheeling. Lord, we're thankful for the minister that we have and the 
the Bible lessons and the sermons that we receive. We're thankful for the leadership of here. We're thankful for the membership of here. We're thankful for our kids. Lord, we're thankful for the Wheeler family and we're mostly thankful for your son. Dear God, as we get ready to close this prayer, we ask that you walk with us, that you guide us, that you protect us, strengthen us where we need to be strengthened. And Lord, gently tear us down where we need to be brought down. Because it is our humble desire to be to see your face in peace. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. amen. It is now time for us to prepare our hearts and minds to partake of the Lord's Supper. And in doing so, we're going to notice the first verse of why did my Savior come to earth? And we'll follow the other verses during communion. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the come to another part of worship, which is called communion of the Lord's Supper. Today is Sunday, the first day of the week. And we find a written example in Acts 20 and 7. The Bible says upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart upon the morrow, and continue to speak until midnight. And so we should continue in these acts of obedience. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the Bible says, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and in prayer. And so Jesus ratified the Lord's Supper before he uh, died. So in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 30, Matthew writes, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And so the Apostle Paul received these commands from the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and following. Paul writes, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it, and remember to me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
Eat it and drink of damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the word. Let us pray for the bread and the cup. Father God, we bow our heads humbly as we know how. Thank you for allowing us to partake of uh, your uh, supper. We ask that you bless the bread, which represents your body. And Father God, we also ask that you bless the cup, uh, which is shared for us for the remission of our sins, which you have accomplished at the cross. Bless us all. Help us to love you and your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why? come to another part of worship which is called collection we find an example in first corinthians chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 paul writes now concerning the collection for the saints as i have given orders to the churches of galatia even so do ye upon the first day of the week let everyone who lay by him in store as god is proper and let there be no gathering till i come we also find in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 8 paul writes but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Let us pray for the good. Father God, we are thankful for this opportunity to share with one another and give back to you what you have already given to us. We are thankful for all the many blessings seen and unseen. Father, guide us, keep us, and bless our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jesus gave us a life for ransom yonder on Calvary. Well, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise His holy name. They should have been brought. Oh, glory, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Well, go, go, go and shout and tell the world around. Go preach it out. Tell it today. People in sorrow. Tell it today. And tell it tomorrow. Oh, preach the word of God that we might win. Oh, around. the Lord. Salvation is full and free. Grand new, new, all over the land and sea. 
gold preacher does. Tell it up on. In every nation. Tell it up on. All over creation. Praise, oh, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Salvation has been brought God. down. There's a blessed home prepared all over the glory land. We'll in bright glory land. Blessed glory land. Now I have trusted in his love. And now I'm heaven bound. Oh, praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Well, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Well, go, go, go and shout and tell the world. Tell hell it today to the people in song. Tell it today and tell it to oh, preach the word of God that we might win all oh, around heaven. All the laws of what did Brendan do? Will spread the spread all over the land and see. In every nation, all over the world, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. Amen. Thank you, man. Yeah. Morning, Willis. Morning. How are we feeling this morning? It is so good to see y'all this morning. It is good to be seen. Want to thank those who are online visiting with us. Uh, we are certainly appreciative of you, and we are per certainly appreciative for those guests that we may have in the audience this morning. I didn't get in the cards, but we want to welcome you and thank you for being here this morning. Brother Rodney? Yes, sir. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. I love God's word. I love the teaching, y'all, because when things ain't going right in your life, mm. and doctors don't tell you what you want to hear, mm. but you still have faith in God, it's still going to be all right. Mm. Is that all right? Amen. All right. I shut up now and get to my job. I'm here before you to bring the announcements at this time and um, have several announcements. So, Y'all, please bear with me. All right. Folks, y'all know our theme. Brother Rodney just preached on our theme. We hope and pray that this is something that you're using in your daily walk and you're studying up on it, folks. Also, we want to continue to encourage uh, to please stay for Bible class. Stay for Bible class, folks. We are uh, on this topic of the church and its growth and biblical leadership. Uh, we got one more class of this today. And we're going to encourage you to please, please stay for that, okay? Also, folks, our deacon selection process, okay? This is important, folks. When you are in a position in a place where the church can grow and having men, faithful men, who are willing to serve, to serve. I'm old school. Take the deacon name off, just be a servant. Just be a servant, folks, okay? Um, if you are willing, be willing to serve, okay? If you meet those qualifications, folks. We have a black box on the wall in the back. You can write on a piece of paper, submit your name on it, okay? We need to get those by the 14th of this month, okay? Also, to the members, we have a form in the foyer, on the table. If you see somebody out among us that you feel that meets the qualifications, and you want to submit their name, there's a form in the back that you can fill out. You can turn in, okay? So don't forget, the form in the back. Look over the membership, look over the congregation. Okay, we've been having these classes, not just be having these classes, there's a reason that we've been having these classes. Okay? You know the qualifications. And if there's a man that meets that, that desire, meets the qualification, by certainly we want to 
try to move forward with that, okay? Also, uh, um, on the calendar, you see on the, on the screen above, you can see that uh, we're gonna be talking about deacons today. Uh, uh, next Sunday on the Bible class, for the next couple of Sundays, we're gonna be dealing with having a conversation with God. How did that sound? Having a conversation with God. There ain't no conversation like the conversation with God. Nobody else can manage up against that. Okay, so we're going to be studying that in the Bible class. Also put on the calendar on the 28th of this month, we're going to be having a fellowship, a fellowship meal on the 28th. So please mark that on your calendar. Okay, and we got Mother's Day coming up on the 6th of May. That's right around the corner, folks. We're about to get into the summertime. So please put that on your calendar as well. Okay. Also, the membership concerns meeting is today, this morning, okay? Uh, you can see that meeting is going to take place to my right over here. So those folks who are going to be for that, please uh, attend that. Also, this morning, there will be a youth conference meeting for about, ten, about five or ten minutes. We're going to meet in the fellowship hall. All those who are planning on going to the youth conference or engaged in that, please meet us in the fellowship hall for about uh, five or ten minutes or more than that. Okay, also uh, the evangelism uh, ministry is this coming Tuesday, okay, that's at 7 p.m. Mark your calendar for that and avail yourself to that. All right, and also the season same class every Friday at 10 a.m., 10 a.m., okay. Uh, mark that on your calendar and avail yourself to that if you're able to. All right, we got the men's breakfast coming up on Saturday. I look forward to that men's breakfast. We got men, men back there can cook. It may not be pretty. You know. But it's good. It's good, sisters. Okay, so brothers, please come out to that. We're trying to add and do some things to help strengthen the men, to help us to grow, okay, that we're better equipped and prepared to do God's work. So please come out for that, okay? Also, um, uh, renovation teams, April the 28th, after April the 28th, okay? Um, let me just kind of read this, all right? The teams to sketch out and dollarize a plan, uh, uh, dollarize a plan too, okay? To improve the look of, of our foyer and auditorium, to improve the functionality uh, of our classroom spaces, also to update the fellowship hall. What we're asking is that we got three teams here, all right? Three teams, here are the team folks, okay? All right, we got the fellowship hall, okay, is one. We got the foyer and auditorium, and we got the classrooms. All right, folks, we want to encourage our members to get engaged. Help us, okay? Ain't no certain person running this year. We're just trying to give ourselves a facelift to make this place more, how do we say it? Presentable. Okay, so so please, folks, we're asking our members to please uh, to get engaged and to help us with that. Also, uh, the women ministry, folks, don't forget about it, coming up on April the 16th, mark your calendar for that, all right, as well as April the 30th, okay? And I have a couple other announcements here, so stay with me. Sisters, if you are planning to attend uh, the Ladies and Girls uh, Symposium at Greenville Avenue, online registration ends April the 21st, April the 21st. Registr registration is free, okay, and you will you want to be able to select the workshop session that you want to attend, okay, when you register. So you got to the 21st to be able to do that, okay? Also, Brother Rodney is asking for those who are part of the Wheeler Singing Group, we're gonna have a meeting this morning right after Bible class. We got a couple of meetings going on, okay? Uh, short, meeting. short meeting, and you're gonna meet back here in the library, is it gonna be okay? Okay, back here in the library, okay? Uh, for about five minutes, it's a short meeting, okay? Uh, also, there will be a short meeting next Sunday, next Sunday, okay, meeting for those who would like to teach and help out with the VBS, Vacation Bible School, okay, uh, on next Sunday after Bible class, okay? Folks, that's being proactive. We ain't waiting in July. Already starting to work now. Well, the work obviously started last year, but we're just trying to make sure we stay out in front of it, okay? Thank you there for uh, Brother Thad. All right, okay, we have that. Uh, also, uh, for Mother's Day, for Mother's Day, please submit your photos, okay, of your mom. Okay, photos, okay, please submit those. Okay, you can send that through the 
the event, uh, the um, elders' website, uh, email. Okay, is there a certain person that'll be taking notes? Okay, Brother Sam, I'm gonna be taking notes. Send notes to Brother Sam. <laughs> you know, I gotta mess with him. But send it to the elders' email, okay? So please uh, make sure you do that as so we start to work on a slide for that. Okay, also uh, the fellowship in the park. Okay, uh, folks, please uh, make sure we, uh, you put, you got that on the calendar that is coming up, okay, uh, next month. We got a lot of things going on here at the church, so please be mindful of that. Also, I just want to mention uh, about the, the birthdays uh, for the month and the anniversary uh, verse for, for the month of uh, April. Folks, look in the, the email, you got a copy of the bulletin, as well as you got a hard copy. And you see those folks' birthday anniversary, send them a text. Send them a text and say, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Okay, so please take a moment uh, to do that, all right? And one other thing before we uh, close out is, um, folks, we want to make sure that as you off on the daily walk and throughout the week, invite a friend to come to worship. Invite a co-worker, a neighbor. Invite someone to come and be a part of our worship, y'all. God has blessed us, given us something that the world don't have. But we got to be willing to share it. We just can't keep this thing covered up. Let's invite somebody, okay, to come to our worship service. And as always, folks, we hope and pray that remember who you are, who you represent, who you belong to, Remember that in your daily walk. May God bless you. May God keep you. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen it is. And we want to brighten Brother Bring in the morning because I know this is one of his favorite songs. And I miss that bass. He sits over there and had that heavy bass. Love it to death. Amen. 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 Sing it over. Fishermen uh, and oh, making okay. them disciples. Amen. Amen. Sing a little song. Okay. Well, Won't let's see. Tell you about let's see. We'll be all right. Want to tell you about the crucified. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. That's what I asked. I thought he had already made copies of it. Oh, okay. Well, in deepest sorrow. Amen. Amen. See him on Calvary. He's dying for you. And dying for me. Amen. Amen. Sing a little louder. 
I want to tell you about him rising. want to tell you about the fruit of vine. Amen. Amen. A see the empty tomb now. Amen. Jesus has arisen. Praise God, Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Singing glory, hallelujah. Amen. Everybody sing. Every, 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 everybody sing. Amen. 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 Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanks in our hearts. Another special day. Pray that we don't wish it to be what we say we are pleased to be. We thank you for the message today. Encourage us to be so willing to do. Pray that you bless you to us that we have to do. And continue to bless the church and the good that we do. Father, we always give you thanks for all the things that you do. In the mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.